Hey guys, in this episode of UDT Unreal Engine Recreate tutorial series, I'm going to be recreating the final steps for the Ghost Recon Wildlands drone mechanic, uh, or system, I guess I should say, that we were setting up. So the final thing we need to do is make it so that we can mark enemies and then switch back to our character and be able to see that marker so that we know where they are. Because that's kind of the whole point of a reconnaissance drone. So now to do this, we're going to need to create an enemy. So real quick, I'm going to make this a little bit cleaner. I'm going to make a file for all of my textures. I'm going to select them all. I'm going to drag them in there. And then I'll make another folder. We'll call it mats because I'm lazy. Can't be bothered to type materials. And then another one we'll call UI or UMG or widgets, whatever you prefer. And now I'm now going to make another one. I'm going to just copy paste my player character here. So actually, you know what? We don't even need all of the code that's in it. So I'm just going to go ahead and make a new character. I'm going to call this BP underscore enemy. Going to open that up. Going to come to the mesh and give it a mannequin so we can see it. I'm going to drag that down 90 so it fits inside. And then just so it has the animations, we're going to go ahead and come on animation class and add the third person animation to it. Okay, so now that we've done that, we're now also going to create a couple more things. Uh, having the mesh selected, we're going to make a widget. I'm going to call this enemy location marker. And then I'm going to import another texture here. Again, there'll be a link in the description for this. I'm going to open up my textures folder. I'm going to drag this in. And as you can see, this is all it is. It's a simple little icon. I'm then going to come to my enemy. I'm going to then come under uh, widget class. Oh, actually, I need to make the widget first. So we'll come back here. UI. We'll make a new one. Use the interface, widget blueprint. Call it WB underscore enemy icon. And then open that up. And then drag in an image. And then we will set this image to the center of the screen. And then once it's set to the center of the screen, we'll just simply align it by 0.5.5. We'll size it to content. Uh, I'm going to scale it so it's bigger. So we go 264 by 264. And then we'll give it its actual image, which will be uh, an icon. Is what it's called? Yeah, there we go. Now I need to scale it again 264 by 264. Oh, yeah, so now once we have this, we don't need to do anything apart from that. So we can just go ahead and save that. Then we can come back into our enemy here. Make sure we have our enemy location marker selected. We're going to come under widget class, give it enemy icon. And you can now see that there is a blueprint, oh, sorry, a widget here. Now we're going to drag this up and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. Yeah, so now once we've done that, currently as you can see by default it is on. We don't want that. We want to be able to turn it on later on. So we're going to go ahead and uh, tick visible and turn that off. We're going to tick is two-sided, although it shouldn't do anything for us. It's not going to help it. We'll just tick it for the sake of it. And that should be it. Set to UI. Yeah. So now we're going to come under our event graph. Uh, we don't need to code anything here for now. For now, we're just going to come to our, our BP drones event graph. And then in here, we're going to have to set up a line trace. So we're going to need a input for that first. We're going to go settings. Uh, project settings, and we're going to find input. And then we'll make a new action map. We'll just call this one a drone scan. I'm going to bind this to FP. I don't think we've used that yet. Yeah, we'll set it to F. Yeah, I haven't used it. And then we come back into our drone. And then we will get that uh, drone scan we just made. Uh, we only need to make a sphere trace for objects, so sphere 
trace for objects. Drag out a fair bit. Now, I'm going to go ahead and get from start. Actually, no, we need our camera. Uh, we don't have. Okay. Under our rangefinder, we can go ahead and just copy paste everything we have set up there to save us a bit of time. And then we can connect that to the start and end. Uh, we can leave that as 5000, yep. We then need to go ahead and go object types, make array, bring this down here. Instead of world static, we're going to set that to pawn because we only want this to work on our enemies, and enemies by default will have a pawn attached to them. We're then going to drag out and go branch, and then connect that. We're going to break the hit result. We're going to get the hit actor, and we're going to make sure that it is a uh, BP enemy. So we're going to cast to enemy. We're going to connect the hit actor to that. If it is that, then we're going to drag out. We're going to get the enemy location marker. And then we're going to set the visibility of it. New visibility will be true. And then in doing that, if we now come into our blueprints again, we get our enemy guy, drag him up. And another one over there. Make it face that way. And we can fly around with our drone. You'll notice by default that they aren't there. And now if I go ahead and look at it and press F, you'll see that now there's a big icon. And there's one issue with this system. Uh, for one, the icon is huge. So if you don't like it, you can scale that down. But you can see now that when I come into my character, I can run around and I can't actually see the icon move. I just see the back of it. It doesn't rotate with it. It's the same thing with a drone. If I'm in my drones mode, I can spin around and it will not rotate with me. So we need to fix that. So to do that, I'm going to come into my enemy now. We're going to remove everything that we have here already. We're going to make it so that whenever our player character or our drone rotate around, it's going to continuously uh, track that. So we're going to need an event tick to do that. I'm going to need a sequence because we're going to need two branches coming out from this. And we're going to get our first branch. And then we're going to leave that. We're going to get a second branch. And we'll leave that. So we're now going to want to make the first one for our third person character. So we'll cast to our third person character. We will then get player character. And then we are going to set the world rotation of our enemy location marker. So we're going to get that, go set world rotation, and connect that, and bring that down here a fair bit. Okay, so from here we're going to drag it out, we're going to go and get our is drone active. Uh, if it is active, we're going to want to set that on both of these. Uh, and then from this little path, I'm going to drag it down here just so it's straight. I'm then going to drag out from this one. We're going to get our follow camera. And from follow camera, we're going to go ahead and get the world location. We're also going to get the world location of this one. We're going to go find look at rotation. Connecting them both together, making sure that the one for enemy location is the start point and the target point is the camera one. And then connect that into our new rotation. Now if you want to make this look a bit cleaner, you can drag this back here. -ish. This isn't going to be the cleanest looking code, but it will get the job done. Okay, so we now need to set up our drone once. We're going to cast to our BP drone. We're going to go get a pawn character. Get player pawn, sorry. We're going to drag it from here. We're going to get the camera. All the way down at the bottom, get follow camera. We're going to get the world location of that. Then we're going to do the same thing we did 
up top, so we're going to get this one again. Part of it. We're then going to get the world location again. We're going to get find lookout rotation, connect them again, and then set world. And make sure that everything's connected. Connect you to you. That should be good. Okay, so what is happening here is. Oh, actually, you need to be into false. So what's happening here is our sequence is playing, and it'll fire out the first one first. It'll check to see if is drone active is false. If is drone active is false, then that means we're in our third person character, so we'll cast to it. We'll then get its follow camera, and then we will get the enemy location marker. And we compare the start point of the get world location of this and the target point of the get world location of our camera. And we compare those two so that we can then get the rotation between them. So say our enemy location marker is located here and our player character is here. It would then get the rotation between these two. So that would be 45 and then it will set that. So then our enemy location marker will rotate towards it. So the front of it will always be facing our player character. And then down here, if our drone is active, that means we're in our drone. Then it will do the exact same thing, but for our drone this time. So we're going to go ahead and comment on that and call it rotate enemy icon to face enemy. Oops, enemy or oh, whoops, to face player character or drone pending on which is active. Compile, save that. Now we can come into our play menu. We can now fly around. We can activate it by pressing F and then we can fly around. And you'll see now I can't see the back of it. It's always rotating with me. And then I come over here and do the same on this guy. It's always rotating with me. And now you can see there's both the icons. And now if I fly around now, you can see it's following me. Anyway, guys, that is the end of this tutorial series altogether. Now we're finally finished with it. If there's any other functionality that I missed with the Drifon drone that you guys want to see, let me know down below in the comments. But other than that, I think I got everything. I haven't personally played the game, I've just seen some videos on it and thought it was really cool, so I may have missed stuff. But anyway guys, if you enjoyed this tutorial series, let me know down below in the comments and leave a, a like group and subscribe if you're feeling up for it. But this is the end of this tutorial series, so there'll be no more videos unless someone says something below. Uh, if you have any ideas for future videos you want to see on different game mechanics, let me know down below in the comments. Or if you got stuck at any point in this tutorial, let me know. But anyway, that's it for now. See ya.